Let's go ahead and welcome our next guest for the show. It is my honor to bring from my hometown area of Cincinnati, Ohio, Mark Edwards. Welcome to the show. Yeah, how far is Notre Dame falling when we're asking about our favorite <laughs> Sex and the City character? Oh, my gosh. What are you guys doing to us? I don't even hey, know. Hey, we're just having a fun with these weekly people. Nothing, nothing yeah, serious, yeah. we promise. Right. Well, I, I was at Samantha, too, but probably for different reasons <laughs> that uh, drove that she showed more skin than any of the rest of them on the show. So, Awesome. Well, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, this is Mark Edwards, Mark from Norwood High School in the greater Cincinnati area. I'm a Cincinnati kid, so I always make reference to it. Well, what, what, what school did you go to that I'm sure I beat? Oh, I'm actually ah. from Florence. I went, I'm from Florence. Oh, Kentucky, so you, 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 you were Northern Kentucky. Kentucky. All right, so yeah. uh, Sean, Sean Alexander was, was beating, beating your school then, right? Yeah, actually, Sean was at my school. Oh, okay, okay. Well, then the, the, you, you, your school was beating everybody then, okay. Until we ran into Trinity, but we don't have to talk about that. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I played with a couple of boys from Trinity. I think it was uh, Joe Babby and Ben Foose both went to, uh, went to Trinity down there in Louisville. Or no? Yeah, Ben Foose is a big name. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Well, Mark, you know, I guess I have you here for the first part of the interview. Um, I just read an interview you did with one of our good friends, Lisa Kelly, and mm-hmm. I don't understand during your time in high school, is it true that you actually were not a Notre Dame fan? I was not a Notre Dame fan. I uh, I got sick and tired of Notre Dame winning. It was almost kind of like the new New York Yankees syndrome for me back then, I guess. Um, yeah, you know, Notre Dame was in the middle of that long win streak in 88 and 89, 23 games. And when they came up to play Miami down in Miami, I was actually – I remember it was my freshman year of high school, and I was rooting for Miami to win that game, and they did. And, uh, they, you know, after you, know, you fast forward a couple of years and, uh, you know, start thinking about, you know, Notre Dame's going to start recruiting me now. And I started thinking about the benefits that go along with going to a school like Notre Dame. And I quickly realized the error of my ways and uh, you know, saw the light, so to speak. <laughs> and then, uh, w- really, what was, if you don't mind me asking, what was it that made you say that's where I want to go? I, You know, it was the – Total right package for for a guy like me. I was a good student. Uh, you know, I graduated in the top of you know top ten of my class. Um, yeah, you know, I knew I was going to go to good good education there. Uh, I knew I was going to graduate. Uh, yeah, I knew, and and I was thinking long term. I knew that the alumni connections, the name Notre Dame means something. Uh, you know, more so than than a lot of other schools. Uh, and it's a national university. I knew I was going to have a chance to win a national title. I knew I was going to have a be on TV every single week. Uh, you know, and, and not only that, but but Lou Holtz used the fullback uh, more than just a blocking mule. If I would have went to Ohio State uh, under John Cooper, I would have been a big blocking mule for Eddie George. Uh, that that would have been been all I all I all I did. I had an opportunity to showcase uh, you know, more of my athleticism in, at Notre Dame than, than I would have anywhere else. Because in, in high school, I ran for a ton of yards. I was a big tailback. That you know, I run over somebody and then I outrun everybody else to the end zone. But uh, you know, come uh, come come college time, I don't be outrun anybody at that point. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we are here with uh, down the line with Mark Edwards, former Notre Dame fullback, former NFL football player. Uh, Mark, you know, from the, you're from the good area that like we talked about. You know, um, what are your thoughts on Notre Dame recruiting kids from Elder and Mole? Hey, you know what? If they're going to help Notre Dame get back to where they, to where we should be, then, then that's great. You know, Cincinnati always has, you know, has always been pretty strong, uh, you know, football hotbed, uh, all of Ohio really. I mean, you know, a lot of those kids go to Ohio State, and you see how well they've done over the past, you know, ten years or so. But uh, you know, I don't care where they're getting the kids from. You know, it's nice that there is some hometown connections there. Uh, you know, for me, I, I just ran to Bob Crable another Notre Dame last week at the uh, Notre Dame fantasy camp. You know, Bob Crable was there, and you know, obviously we have that uh, Cincinnati connection, even though we never played in Notre Dame together. Uh, you know, we, we were certainly generations and coaches apart, but you know, there there is still a little blob, uh, a little little more of a bond there from people who are from the same hometown. Yeah, I actually remember pretty well when you got drafted to the Niners in '97. Everyone going, oh man. You know, from this area, we all grew up with the bad years of the Bengals and the good years we remember. <laughs> they couldn't get past the 49ers. Uh, what was absolutely. that like going back home and telling everybody, hey, I'm a Niner? You know, you know what? First of all, the, uh, the the exciting part of the entire draft, I mean, 
you know, I think I mentioned in that article with Lisa that if I had to do the draft all over again, I would, you know, just go play golf. I wouldn't sit there all day. I was the 55th overall pick in the draft, and I didn't get drafted until 8.30 that night. The draft started at noon. Uh, and what was cool about it is that the the uh, place where I had my draft party, it didn't have ESPN2. The draft switched to ESPN2 like at 7.30 or so. And, uh, you know, I kind of thumbed through. Uh, I finally got the call. We, we, we you know, the the, the, store, the the restaurant owner was frantically trying to get uh, ESPN2 in line with the cable company. And, uh, you know, he couldn't get it. So I finally got the call, and nobody knew who it was. I'm sitting there, you know, talking to talk on the phone. Hey, thank you, sir. I'm very excited. I uh, appreciate the opportunity and whatnot. And I uh, hung up the phone. Everybody screaming at me, hey, who is it? Who is it? And uh, you know, I have three boxes of hats there. I kind of thumbed through the first box. I didn't find it. Thumbed through the second box. Didn't find it. And then thumbed through the third box and then pulled it out and slapped it on. The whole place went nuts. Quite frankly, it really never no, – nobody ever got on me about, you know, being the big bagel nemesis and then, and, you know, denying them of the two Super Bowls. Uh, so, I, I guess uh, your time here heals all wounds. You know, it's been, uh, you know, several years since, uh, since those Bengals teams lost. But uh, – I certainly remember those games well, and uh, you know was, was a big Bengals fan uh, you know, growing up. Nice. So, guys, we're down here with Mark Edwards, and uh, Mark. Actually, before I pass you on to my co-host Steve for a couple of questions, I just wanted to tell you, when I was really young, it was your senior year at Notre Dame. You actually signed an eight by ten for my dad and gave that to me. So I wanted to say, you know, you're a huge reason I actually became a Notre Dame fan because I had no idea anything about Notre Dame until my dad hands me that picture. I go, Dad, who's this guy? And he explains the whole story about Notre Dame and how you're a local guy playing there. So you're a big reason I actually have this radio show, and I just want to say thank you. Uh, well, yeah, I'm, I, it makes me happy and sad all at the same time. I mean, happy that, you know, I turned you a Notre Dame fan. Sad that you were a little boy when that happened. And I should not feel much older. <laughs> I'm only 23. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Oh, to be 23 again, I tell you. <laughs> Thanks again, Mark. It was really great to have you on, man. Excellent. I appreciate it. All right, Mark, I cannot believe I'm the third person interview in two weeks. Tim, Lisa, nobody's asked you yet, what haircut does Mark Edwards have in 2012? Oh, my gosh. You know what? The flat top was not working for me any longer. It started, you know, I started getting kind of the widow's peak going a little bit. It got just a tiny bit thin, you know, on uh, both both corners of the front there. So I actually had to grow it out a little bit and longer up top. Um, you know, it's still pretty darn short, uh, you know, but it's not uh, not the old time flat top anymore. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad you stretched it out a little bit. I did rock that. I was in junior high during those the Notre Dame days. We want to remind everyone one of the main reasons you're here is you're involved with Oregon and the trip. And I wanted you to see if you could talk a little bit about uh, what you're going to be doing with the trip and some of the legends you're going to be going there with and what you expect out of the Dublin Navy trip. You know what? As far as I'm concerned, you know, I'm just a goodwill ambassador for Notre Dame uh, <laughs> when it comes to this trip. You know, I mean, first of all, you're going to be going, you know, I'm going to be going over there with, you know, Many guys from different generations uh, that played at Notre Dame, and really that's the coolest thing uh, for me uh, personally. I, I was part of that uh, last team of my senior year. We went over there and played Dublin, and I played Navy in Dublin uh, back in '96. So I've kind of been there and done that, uh, but you know certainly excited to go back. But yeah, you know it's good to bond, you know, not only with with you know different players from different generations, but and just the Notre Dame fans in general. Um, you know, I got back for that fantasy camp last week. And I tell you what, it was a lot of darn fun. I mean, these guys, they pay big money to come in and get the Notre Dame football experience. They they dress in the locker room. They put on full pads. They go out and practice on the practice fields with the coaches. Um, you know, and then they play a game in the stadium. It's flag, but those guys are still hitting a little bit. But just the camaraderie, because there, there were probably – you know, 20 former players in there, guys from the 60s like, uh, you know, Johnny, uh, Johnny Lujak and, and, uh, or Johnny Ladner and uh, George Gedeke. He was a center on the national championship team in 66. You had guys from the 70s that were, that were, that were there, uh, uh, Luther Bradley, uh, you know, Bob Crable, who played in the 70s, early 80s. 
Uh, Bob Crable was there. Then you had a bunch of guys from the, from the 80s, you know, the national championship team, guys in the 90s, and even Jerome uh, Sapp, you know, he just had on. He, he, I, got, I got to meet him for the first time. So getting to meet those guys, you know, hear the stories of their Notre Dame experiences uh, was, was as much fun as anything. And then not only that, but just spending time with the campers, uh, you know, the guys who paid their money to come in and experience kind of what I'm, you know, a lot of us who played almost took for granted at times while we were there. We obviously – realize how important it is now and, and how, how special it was uh, or how special it did, and that experience was now. But, uh, it, you know, it, those are the reasons that, that I want to go over and do this, to, 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 to branch out to the rest of the Notre Dame family and, and then just be part of something special. I mean, it's going to be awesome, everyone. You can check that out at katiesway.org. Um, remind everyone, Mark Edwards, 2002 Super Bowl champion, Notre Dame, 93 to 96. I had a question from a Patriot fan friend of mine. They said, we know you played with an older Steve Young and a young Tom Brady, but what we want to know from one of our favorite fullbacks is was Ray Lewis the hardest middle linebacker to go toe-to-toe with, and if he wasn't, who was? You know what? He was not. The the wow. you know, oh. story about Ray. Absolutely. Well, yeah, now now you know there's a difference between being the hardest hitter and being the best the hardest hitter and being the best linebacker. There's a big difference there. Um, you know the hardest hitters, you know, are generally you know no name guys that that you know just just knock your block off because they're out there you know trying to make a team. The, the the toughest guys for me to ever block were small linebackers or or safeties. You know, guys that were about five eleven, six foot you know, between 120 and 135 and could run because I had more difficult time getting underneath their pads than these other, uh, the, these bigger linebackers. Um, you know, a guy played against LeVon Kirkland seven times, or several times. He was, you know, <laughs> 6'2", 290, whatever he was. He was easy to block because you get under his pads. Uh, and, you know, and he wasn't explosive. You know, Ray, Ray, you know, he, Ray, Ray ran well, but he wasn't explosive uh, as far as uh, isolation blocks. Now, Anybody can hit you damn hard if uh, if you're not looking, you know. Uh, if they blindside <laughs> you, if you catch a pass, I mean, anybody can blow you up. But, you know, mano a mano, you know, the hardest guys to hit were those, those shorter guys who were fast and explosive. Our Mark Edwards on here telling it like it is. Question everyone wants to know when they talk to players from your era. Your last four years were also the last four years of Coach Holtz in South Bend. Uh, you know, what did it mean to be part of a, a team coached by him? And do you have anything that you maybe remember you took away from your years under Coach Holtz? You know, the, the biggest thing about uh, about Holtz, I think, the thing I really took from him was, and, and this goes back from the time that he recruited me, you know, he said, hey, Mark, you know, college is not a four-year decision. It's a 40-year decision. And that rang so true with Notre Dame. You know, and then and, and as far as Holtz goes, you know, playing for him, you don't you don't appreciate him nearly as much as you're as you're playing for him uh, that you do after you leave the place and then after you you know you, you move on because when you're playing for him, his philosophy, in, in my opinion, was to put so much pressure on you during practice that come game time it was easy. You know, he, I don't remember I, I, in all my games there. I only remember him going crazy and screaming at us at halftime for one game, and that was Purdue my freshman year. You know the the the, the lifetime achievement award national championship for Bobby Bowden season. That uh, you know we we went in uh, to Purdue who was terrible at the time, and we were tied zero to zero with him at halftime. We were number four in the country or something like that. Uh, he, he he got upset that time, but you know he just put so much pressure on you during practice that come game time, you know it was easy. You went out there, you played, and you you know you, you just just let it all hang out. Oh well, I mean we love hearing loose stories, and I wanted to talk to you. you. Mentioned earlier in the interview, you said Notre where Notre Dame should be. That word should obviously be important when you watch the team these days. Is there anything you see or that you think they're going to finally turn that corner, be a national championship contender um, sometime soon? Or what do you kind of feel when you're watching Notre Dame in the last couple of years? You know what? We have been very clear. We're not, we're not close to being – or in the last couple of years, I, I would not say we are close to being an elite team. And I don't say elite team. I'm talking, you know, top five competing for a national championship. But we have been very darn close to being a BCS team the last couple of years. And if you notice, you know, one of our biggest problems the last couple of years are closing out games. 
you know, losing close ones. We've been, what, 8-4, and 8-5 and five the last two seasons, and we easily, you know, could have been 10-2 and two every year, you know, 11-2, you know, 11-3, you know, something along those lines uh, with just, you know, one less turnover, one less mistake at the end of the game. But I think the good thing is is that, you know, we are recruiting – great players now. We're getting, I mean, absolute studs in there. I mean, some of these guys that Kelly's bringing in are, are just ridiculous. And, and you know, you, I don't care how good of a coach you are, you need the horses to win, period. And, you know, it's tough recruiting against schools where, you know, kids don't have to go and compete academically. It's as, as difficult as, as it is in Notre Dame. You know, when, you know, they're going to be able to enjoy themselves. And these kids don't necessarily see the big picture of, of what college is. Once again, the kids that don't realize that, hey, this isn't just a four-year decision, it's a 40-year decision. And you know, I think that's where you know, Coach Kelly staff is really, uh, really, really improving things now. Um, I'm sorry, Mark, one second. I don't know, or something just turned on. <laughs> that was the ghost right. of Newt Rocky. <laughs> we apologize. That's right. Hey, it was a fight song. I like the fight song, so I'm all good with that. <laughs> all right, well, Mark, Everyone, we're online with Mark Edwards. The last thing I wanted to let you do, you co-wrote a book recently from Blue Collar Ohio to Super Bowl champion. Wanted to see if you wanted to give a plug about it, what, what readers of Notre Dame fans and, and Patriot fans and all your fans might find in that book. Hey, you know what? More than anything, it was just a heck of a lot of fun to, to go back and relive those memories and, and uh, you know, talk about that stuff. It just talks a little bit about how I grew up, uh, you know, where I came from, you know, the challenge I had to overcome. Uh, and, and, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, people will, will be entertained by it. Maybe they'll learn a little something from it as well. Um, you know, I mean, uh, I, I mainly, you know, I just really enjoyed uh, reliving those memories. All right. I mean, everyone, thank you so much to Mark Edwards. I know Tim and I especially, you were one of our favorite players when we were growing up, and it's just an honor to talk to you. Fantastic insight. Everything you said was amazing. We can't wait to – I'm going to listen to this again tonight. But thank you so much for coming to our Mark. We really appreciate it. Hey, my pleasure, guys. We can't uh, – you know, uh, I can't, can't wait to do it again. Hey, Mark, Thanks. one last Every question week. before we go. <laughs> okay. All right. Are our hometown Reds bringing home the World Series this year? Well, you know what? Let's just get to the playoffs first. But uh, I tell you what, I was uh, I, I was broom in hand when I was a sophomore in high school in 1990 when uh, we swept the Oakland A's. So, yeah, that Joey Votto is pretty special, isn't he? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you know they're 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 in the mix, but you know what? It's a long, hard season, and uh, you know you got to hope that you stay healthy. And uh, you know, but but I know you know Cincinnati fans, uh, you know. Are are uh, just so loyal and just love their hometown teams, and you know it, it's nice that uh, you know the Bengals had a, had a solid season this year. Now the Reds are looking pretty good. Uh, you know Cincinnati fans have have suffered for for way too long. See, guys, this is what I deal with all the time. Mark's telling the truth. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thanks again, Mark. Really appreciate it, man. All right, all right guys. You take it easy. We'll we'll, uh, we'll catch up soon. Sounds good. Bye-bye.